Come on, if that's the way you feel, let the building ring with your praise right now. Come on, somebody act like God's been good to you. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. that. That was just a little bit. Surely the Lord has been good to everybody in the building. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church on a Sunday night? Uh, there, there's just no place I'd rather be than right here in the house of God. Amen. Filling His presence, worshiping with His people. Amen. And of course, we've come to an extremely important part of the service. And uh, I've heard many say, and I believe they're right, that the preaching is the most important part. But I, I think it's either on equal playing field or maybe it's got it beat or maybe it's a close second. But to me, it's just as important what you do when the word's preached. Because the preaching's important, but if uh, you don't do nothing with it, that, that's the most important part is that when the word goes forth, how you mix your faith with the word and you respond. Not, not, you're not responding to a preacher. You're not saying amen because there's something good being said or it's, it's hyping you up or making you feel good. You're saying amen because it's the Word of God. And I love the Word of God tonight. While you get your Bibles and turn to the New Testament, I want to say that God is very interested to see how far this church is willing to go for what you want. I'm going to say it one more time for those in the back row. God is interested in seeing how far this church is willing to go for what you want. If you want revival, God's going to see how far you're willing to go. You want harvest, God's going to see. You want victory, you want peace, you want that joy Sister Rankin's talking about, singing about. Uh, it, it comes with a price. Amen. And uh, I don't know if I can do this message justice tonight, but I'm going to try to give you what God gave me to the best of my ability, the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians chapter six and uh, verse 11 is where we'll begin. Thank you, Bishop. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Very, very familiar passage. We're not going to dig into all of the armor of God, but I believe I want to pull something here that God has laid on my heart. This is going to be simple tonight, folks. I mean, we've been getting simple, but this is as simple as simple can be, if that's all right. But I, I've got to obey the Holy Ghost, and this has been stirred in my heart for weeks. And um, I feel like it's very much tailor-made for this church. I've never preached it. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that um, God has really dealt with me for several weeks, and I finally felt a liberty to preach this. And this afternoon in the sanctuary, I just told God, if you'll just help me somehow uh, get past the simplicity of it um, and, and deliver it to the word, to the ears of your people today. Let the word get through to them. Amen. Verse 11 of Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers. We're not, we're not talking about the low man on the totem pole here. We're, we're dealing with rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in Praise Spiritual wickedness in high places. I sure like when the devil starts messing with that sound system, don't you? I'm sure it probably happens to everybody, but it sure feels like when I start getting somewhere good, he tries to take my voice away. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. If there's ever been a day that's evil, it's today. And when you having done all, you're going to stand. I want to focus on verse 12, but let me say you won't be able to withstand or stand, period, unless you have done all. Somebody say, do all. You you ain't going to make it unless you having done all. That defies the minimal mentality. I haven't got that out of my spirit yet. I'm still trying to, to let it go, but God just keeps bringing it back to me somehow. Unless you have done all. You can't do all by doing the minimum. That, that, that mentality that it's going to take to withstand and to stand is a mentality that says you've got to give it everything you've got. And so my objective tonight is to insert a mentality uh, that sets the tone for the days and the weeks and the months ahead. And um, something that will keep you when the evangelist is gone and the pastor's not picking up his cell phone for whatever reason. Something that's going to keep you in the storm. Something that's going to keep you through the fire. Can I help you with a mentality tonight? Would you, will you let me help you? Amen. This is how you have to view yourself. And I didn't come to hype you. I came to issue a challenge by the help of the Holy Ghost. But this is my subject. This has got to be your mentality. I am a fighter. I am a fighter. He hot hot all over yes hot Would you lift your hands one more time? Call on the name of the Lord. Ask Him to help us in this service. We've got to have a move of the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, that's appropriate. Just clap your hands unto the Lord. Come on, somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. In the name of Jesus. God bless you today. You may be seated. I, I want you to understand from the inception today that we are in spiritual warfare. Surely you understand and know this by now through the course of the last 50 years of Bishop's ministry. Uh, Surely he would tell us today uh, that it has not come without a fight. Uh, the The last almost three years under Pastor Rankin and Sister Rankin here, it has not come without a fight. The effects that we feel today, the Spirit of God that is moving in our service even tonight, it did not come without a fight. There is spiritual warfare. Uh, Amen. And, and, And the faster that you can awaken to this fact, the faster that you can come to grip with uh, from now until Jesus comes, it's going to be warfare. Some of y'all don't believe me yet, but you will before Jesus comes back, trust me. Uh, but between now and the trump of God, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, or a hundred years from now, there is going to be spiritual warfare on this earth because heaven is pulling for souls, uh, but so is hell. This morning we experienced the pull of hell, but thank God we felt the pull of heaven. It's warfare. It's warfare. And uh, according to the Bible, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Uh, Let me make this very clear and make a plug for unity for a moment. If you are fighting with brothers and sisters in the church, you're in the wrong fight. 
Because we're not here to wrestle against flesh and blood. If you're fighting against me as the preacher, if you're fighting against him as the pastor, you're in the wrong fight, my friend. Because God didn't put you here to wrestle against the flesh and the blood. Uh, If you were fighting who you are supposed to be fighting, you would understand very quickly it's not the saint across the aisle. It's not the spouse sitting next to you. It's not your your mother or your father. It's not flesh and blood that we wrestle not, we struggle not, we fight not against flesh and blood. Who are we fighting against? We are fighting against the spiritual wickedness, the things of hell that are doing everything they can to prevent what God wants done upon the earth through His church. One version of the Word of God said that this is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. You must understand today uh, that that this thing is not just going to be a fight on Sunday night alone. If you haven't figured it out, it's a fight on Monday. It's a fight on Tuesday. I came prepared to fight in this pulpit. I promise you, I ask for God to bestow upon me a Holy Ghost boldness and an apostolic authority and anointing to come against every little spirit and every little wickedness that wants to flare up in this building. I came with a vendetta against hell to let them know and you know I am a fighter. Amen. I've said this before, but as we continue to level up in this revival, so will hell. Hell is not going to sit on the premise uh, while we endeavor to obtain every promise uh, that God has for you and for I. Uh, Some of you do get victory in your Sunday night or your Sunday morning uh, or whenever it is. uh, And then you fight hell all week long uh, because hell doesn't want you to get the victory uh, and hell doesn't want you to keep the victory. And keeping the victory is just as important as getting the victory. I'm telling you, I feel victory in this house. I I didn't come to preach some little victory, make you feel good message and and walk out of here and everything's peaches and cream. I'm talking about I feel victory in this house uh, and I feel victory in the atmosphere. I, I believe something's getting ready to move in the spiritual realm on behalf of the Jesus church. Amen. And so it's easy. It's easy to just back down and, 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 and stop what you're doing when the going gets tough and say, this isn't worth the fight. It's easy to believe the lies and the deceptions of hell and say, this, this really isn't why I feel like I ought to be here. I, I didn't join this church to be a fighter. I, I, I didn't come to the Jesus church uh, uh, to, to fight. No, I, I, I'm a peaceful person. I, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Sounds like somebody from the 70s. No offense to all you 70s. But we, 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 got, we got to make for sure that the hippie culture ain't in the apostolic culture. Peace, dude. I, I want to follow all men with peace and holiness and all that other good stuff. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's also a part of me that says what I have is worth fighting for. <laughs> I, I'm going to be real with you. I know some of you are looking at me like, what's the preacher talking about? You, you haven't figured it out yet. That's all right. Before we're done, I hope you will. But I come to advocate that what God uh, uh, wants to do for you and what God wants to do for this church uh, is absolutely worth fighting for. The question that I've come to ask this church, though, uh, is that is there any fight left in the Jesus church? 
I, I know you've been living for God for some time. I, I know you've been going through it for some time. But I want to know after it's all said and done and the dust is settling today, do you have any fight left in your spirit? Uh, do you have any fight left in your soul? Uh, I know the attack of the enemy is great. Uh, I know the assault of hell is relentless. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that laying down and giving up is not the answer. You, you got to make up in your mind, I am a fighter. Uh, and I'm going to fight until I breathe uh, my last dying breath. Uh, until I finish the course, uh, I'm going to keep the faith. Uh, and I'm going to fight the good fight. Uh, well, I just don't know if I have what it takes to be a fighter. I, I don't know if I possess all that you got to possess uh, to be a fighter. That's why you have a God. Because the Bible says in Psalms 144, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. God's not going to put you in this thing and not equip you for the fight. God's not going to bring the wiles of the devil your way and not equip you with some armor. Are you hearing me today? Uh, God said, I'll teach your hands to war. I'll teach your fingers to fight. Uh, I'll be your strength in battle. Uh, God's not going to leave you hanging. Uh, he understands that there's a pool of hell uh, and a pool of heaven. Uh, and you're caught right back in the middle of it all. Uh, but I'm going to tell you today, God's going to equip this church. Uh, he's already doing it. Uh, God's going to teach you how to war. Uh, he's going to teach you how to fight. Well, we're ready to fight. We're ready for the hunter's soul revival. No, that's Goliath. You ain't ready for Goliath. We're still dealing with lions and bears right now. But once you get past your lion and your bear, God will send you your Goliath. It's a process with God. But, but you are only going to be able to fight as good as you train. You can be seated. If you train a little, you'll lose a lot. But if you train a lot, you'll win a lot. I told you it's going to be simple tonight. We're swimming in the shallow end of the pool, if you're all right with that. We didn't dive off in the deep. We've got our floaties on in the kiddie pool tonight. I said if you train a little, you're going to lose a lot. But if you're willing to put the time in and train a lot, uh, you'll have a lot of victory. Uh, you'll have a lot of wins. Uh, you'll have a lot of... May I preach to this congregation today uh, that if we train during the week, uh, the fight on Sunday will go a lot smoother. If you want to fight during Sunday and Wednesday only, uh, you're going to have a bigger fight Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Uh, but if you'll train every single day uh, when the fight comes, uh, you'll be ready for it. Uh, and I promise you, you'll come out victorious. Uh, you'll come out on the other side, the winner of this thing. Well, you don't understand how it is on Wednesday. I've been working all day, uh, and I'm tired in my flesh, uh, and I just wish we could uh, get the preacher to get his few minutes and get out the way because i got to get home uh, and get my sleep and get the kids fed and all that. I understand. That's life. I'm not, I'm not unaware of any of that. Uh, but at some point, you got to get your flesh under submission uh, and say, I know the flesh is weak, uh, but my spirit's willing. Uh, I'm telling you what God's looking for in this last day and hour uh, is a church. Uh, it's men and women and young people uh, that are willing to fight uh, not just fight on Sunday night uh, but fight on Sunday morning uh, and fight on Wednesday night Bible study uh, and fight during revival uh, and fight when the evangelist leaves uh, and fight on are you understanding me today God uh, is looking to raise up an army uh, of people with a mentality uh, that says I don't care how tough it is uh, I don't care how weary I am I am a fighter really doesn't make a lot of sense to get a win on Sunday if you ain't willing to get up and fight for what you got on Sunday on Monday well I tried to fight preaching I just got knocked down boo hoo you big wimp you don't understand. I just, I tried and it just didn't work out with me. I tried to fight back, but hell was just after me and hell hit me with everything it had. And all it did when I tried to fight was get me knocked down. 
You know where I'm going with this. You've heard this kind of preaching before. This ain't nothing new under the sun. Uh, the reason some of y'all are afraid to fight to begin with is not because you can't or you don't know how or you don't know what to do. You won't fight because you're afraid of getting knocked down. But with the adjustment of our mentality tonight, hopefully there'll come an understanding that God and His Word are there for a reason. And when you get knocked down, your mentality must not be to stay down because you're a fighter. A fighter, a real fighter doesn't stay down. He gets back up. I'm going somewhere with this tonight. Uh, don't, don't let the simplicity fool you. But I'm going to tell you, your mentality's got to be rejoice, uh, not against me. Uh, oh, my enemy. For when I fall... I shall, it's not a maybe. It's not a possibility. It's an absolute, I shall arise. I know you knocked me down. I know I'm flat on my back. But don't start your party yet. Rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy. When I fall, it's going to happen. You're going to fall. When I fall, it's going to happen. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to miss the mark. Because nobody's perfect. Are you perfect, Bishop? Are you perfect, Pat? I'm not perfect. None of us up here are perfect. My wife is about as close to perfect as you can get. Y'all can be seated. So is Sister Rankin. I said that, not your husband. I'm teasing. He said that. He said that. Let me tell you what makes a great, a great fighter such a worthy opponent. It's not about how skilled he is. It's not about how hard he can hit. It's not about how fast he is. What really makes a great fighter, and even more importantly, what makes the fighter's opponent nervous, is when that fighter can get hit hard as the opponent can hit them and knocks them down and they get back up. I'm going to tell you something. I'm worried about somebody that I can bow my fist up and hit them as hard as I can and knock them down and they get back up grinning. That does something to me. <laughs> y'all ain't hearing me right now. I'm talking about a mentality that the devil's hit some of y'all in the mouth uh, and knocked you down uh, and you're just laying there in your little depression and you're laying there in your little discouragement. Uh, but if you would get back up with a smile on your face, I know you knocked me down. But I'm getting back up again. I'm preaching to people tonight that you've been knocked down this week. But the Lord said, get back up. Get back up. Rise again. You got to learn to wipe the blood off and say, hit me again. Give me your best shot. You know what makes the devil worried? Is when you can look him in the eye, blood dripping down your face and say, is that the best you can do? That's what a fighter does. Fighter don't go off in the corner and go, oh God, he hit me. Oh man, the devil's after me and my marriage and my finance. Oh God. A fighter gets back up and... I'll take another piece of that if you don't mind. That's what a fighter does. You say, well, I failed. That, that's, 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 that, that excuses me from the fight. Failure doesn't take you out of the fight. Failure gives you more reason to get back up again. I, I really failed though, preacher. So what you failed? Who hasn't? I'm not making excuses for sin. I'm not making excuses for laziness. I'm not making excuses for you doing the minimum. But I'm going to tell you something. That was yesterday. It's a new day today. It's going to be a new day tomorrow. You better make up in your mind. I'm, I'm not just preaching another Sunday night. Give you the feel good kind of message. I'm preaching to you something in the Holy Ghost. You got to make up your mind. I'm going to fight with everything in me. I'm going to fight like I never fought before. Hallelujah. The other realization that you must come to is uh, an understanding that you're not fighting against flesh and blood. is that you're fighting spirits and things in the spiritual realm. 
And that's why it's so important how you fight. Because you can't bring a knife to a gunfight. And you can't bring flesh to a spirit fight. Listen, I, I went to a middle school. I had to go through security scanners every morning. Had to go through like I was going through airport and I was a terrorist. Take my belt off, my shoes. They had to break open my trumpet case and look through that and make sure I wasn't bringing guns and knives. I grew up in a very rough neighborhood. And every day I had to go through that thing. Uh, and I had to have the understanding uh, uh, that, that, that this is a serious environment. This is a bad deal. And I got to be careful where I go and what I allow myself to get in the middle of because somebody was liable to sneak something in. And I'm going to tell you something. Out of all the goofy fights that I was a part of and witnessed, I always learned those who brought knives to gunfights never won. Likewise in the ministry, I have watched people time and time again try to deal with a spiritual battle in the flesh and they get beaten every time. That's why the Apostle Paul said, for though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. I'm trying to hold everything in right now because i got to get something out of my spirit. And I'm trying hard not to just, just land on these little things and just preach the, the devil out of them. But I'm going to tell you something. you got to catch this uh, because this is what I really feel in my heart and in my spirit. This is my hope. Uh, this is my prayer. This is my faith uh, that somebody is going to walk in here out of obedience uh, to your pastor and you're going to walk in here with faith uh, and you're going to come in here and pray between 7 and 8 uh, and you're going to walk in here in the flesh uh, but you're going to walk out in the spirit why, why is that so important because when you start warring in the spirit hell is going to lose its mind hell is going to start losing territory when the people of God say this is how we fight we don't fight flesh and blood but we do fight every spirit we do fight every principality we do fight every ruler of darkness and we do it on our knees in an old fashioned prayer meeting you got to fight past your flesh and your weariness and your carnality. And you got to say, I am a fighter. And this is how I fight. Why is it so important that we learn to pray in the Spirit and fight with a spirit of prayer? Because the next verse says, For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Warfare can only be won with the right weapon. And whoever's got the biggest weapon wins. Again, if you bring carnal weapons to spiritual warfare, you lose. But if you understand that the weapon I've been given is not that of carnality, but the weapon that I have access to, the button that I can push, the trigger I can pull, the sword that I can unsheath is a weapon that's mighty through God. Mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. I'm here to tell you today, if you want strongholds to be pulled down, you have to stop trying to pull them down using carnal methods. Our weapons that we use to destroy strongholds are not carnal, they're spiritual. If you want to get spiritual, you have to pray, and then you got to pray some more. The only way you get in the Spirit is pray. And the only way you stay in the Spirit is pray. And the only way you stay full of the Spirit is pray. Y'all were rejoicing a while ago when I told you you can get back up. I start talking about prayer and it kind of, whew. That's okay. I knew what I was getting myself into today. It's okay. I'm all, I'm all right with that. What we need in this last day and hour of this church is a church that learns how to put everything else on pause and say prayer is still a priority. Prayer is still a must. Prayer is still essential. Oh, God, help me today. I'm trying to hold back and I, I'm struggling to hold back. But the reason that the churches of old saw what they did uh, is they understood the necessity of prayer. Uh, they knew how to set aside weights uh, and distractions uh, and temptations. Uh, they understood uh, if we're going to see miracles, uh, we got to pray. Uh, if we're going to see people filled, uh, we got to pray. Uh, if we're going to see God move, uh, we've got to pray. 
the reason that the day of Pentecost took place uh, like it did uh, is somebody crawled up in an upper room uh, and they prayed uh, until they got tired. No. They prayed until they didn't feel like praying. No. No. They prayed until they just got so weary they just gave up. No, no, no. Peter was a fighter. You ain't going to touch my Jesus. I'll cut your ear off. That same joker was up in the upper room. And he was pushing with the people. We're going to tarry here until. And they prayed. And all of a sudden the day of Pentecost was fully come. It wasn't just something that happened overnight. It was something that tarried a little while. It was somebody that said, hey, if we're going to see God move, we got to pray until. Hear me today, church, if strongholds are coming down, we got to get back to prayer. If you want Pentecost in 2023, you got to find you a place and you got to pray until. If you want to scratch more names off the wall, you don't need a magic marker. You need a prayer meeting. Can I just be real with you today? And I'm hurrying. Can I be transparent tonight? Uh, we, we had a, a shorter song service. I'm taking a little time preaching, okay? But, but, but this is what disgusts me. I've just, just come to unburden my heart. i come to obey God. Furthermore, what I believe really disgusts God are men. Leaders of the home. I felt this so strong that today I was kneeling there asking God to help me. God strongly dealt with me about this. He's been dealing with me for some time. And I just wanted it to be the right moment. And I'm believing tonight's the right moment. But there are men, leaders of the home, head of the house. Maybe I should have called this the restoration of the backbone. But because, this is why I say that, it's because we've lost backbone in the church. While the homosexual agenda is being pushed... Like never before. While the perversion of society is being flaunted. Celebrated like never before. And you're ridiculed if you don't hop on that. While hell is running loose and rampant. Somehow, some way, there is a seemingly limp-wristed, spineless, sensitive spirit. Part of the woke culture. That's infiltrated the church. And it's been dropped in some unsweet tea of some good men. And all of a sudden it's made you tender. I'm trying to be nice tonight. The same spirit of perversion that's filtering in people's hearts and minds out there. And homo this and all that other junk. That same little spirit. I, I, I'm not saying you prefer somebody else. But I'm saying that the root is the same. Because it takes away your ability to stand up for what you believe in. And what's happened is we've got good apostolic men that you've laid down your arms and surrender to a generation filled with wickedness refusing to fight back. God called you to be a fighter and yet you've laid down what it takes to fight. Oh God, I'm stepping into it now. Oh, preacher, I'm a fighter. I, I, I see what you got going on here. I'm in the ring. I, I'm a fighter. I, I know how to throw a punch or two. I, I'll fight back when the time is ready to fight back. I, I'm going to tell you something. You're not fighting back if you're not praying. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't care how good you come to church. I don't care how faithful you are in your tithes and offerings. I don't care how many times you march around the church. If you're not a praying man, you're not a fighting man. You want to know why he's been here for 50 years? Praying. You don't pray, you don't stay. Families that pray together, stay together. Husbands and wives that pray together, stay together. You show me a family, a husband that's not leading his home in prayer, I'll show you a few months, weeks, years down the road, and everything's gone crazy. I'm going to tell you something. It disgusts God. When you leave your home, be seated. Your marriage, your children, your mind, completely open and vulnerable and exposed to the attacks and to the wiles of the devil when you don't pray like you should. I'm preaching to men, 
but this still works for good godly women in here as well. You're, 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 no, you're no different. Uh, I'm not sitting here saying the man's greater than the woman and the woman's greater than the man. I'm just telling you, we've all got a mind. And if we don't have the right mentality, uh, then we're going to get messed up. And the only way you keep the right mentality is if you're praying. If I walked up to one of these sheriffs, I get them confused. I don't know who's who, but one of them Lopez boys. They both got a wife. Which one are you? Jacob. I'm going to start buying y'all some name tags. If I walked up, pulled a loaded gun out, and pointed it at the wife of Brother Lopez. You're his wife back there, right? Okay, good. If I took a gun out and pointed it at your wife, you wouldn't waste two seconds pulling your gun out. You wouldn't even think twice about shooting a preacher. You pull that trigger as fast as you could and as many times as you could till I was down there not breathing again. <laughs> you would do whatever it takes to prevent harm coming to those that you love. You willing to be fight for them and die for them. But spiritually, some men here, and I'm not talking about Brother Lopez, I'm just using him as an example because he's a wife and he's got a gun on him. But spiritually, some men refuse to do what they would do naturally. I've used this before about breaking in a home, but this is so applicable tonight. That's why Jesus said, Oh, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That doesn't mean you're going to pass out. It means you're going to get weary and stop praying. Oh, that men ought always to pray. Real men pray. I know this is simple. Forgive me, okay? I'm not apologizing for the message, but forgive my delivery today. But real men pray. And real men intercede. I'm going to tell you something. You want respect in your home? Start praying, Daddy. You want respect in your marriage? Start praying, husband. You want to lead your family to heaven? Start praying, sir. You'll take them to a ball game, won't you? You'll take them hunting and fishing, won't you? You'll take them to the lake and give them a ride on your, your new boat, won't you? You better believe you will. But you'll struggle taking them to a prayer room. And you want to call yourself a fighter. You're just holding the ropes up on the ring saying, go ahead, step on in, have at my kids. Have at my marriage. Have at my household. What you're doing when you show them that everything else is important except for prayer. Number one, you're showing prayer is not a priority to daddy. And then they're going to grow up thinking prayer doesn't have to be a priority to them. And then we have successfully created another generation of prayerless, spineless sissies that claim to be apostolic or some form of it. We're creating cultures in our homes and in our children. Uh, and we're, we're exampling them to them that you can come to church, uh, but you don't have to pray. You can give in the offering plate, but you don't have to pray. You can worship to the beat, uh, but you don't have to pray. Uh, and there's another generation coming up, uh, and they know not the Lord, uh, and they walk not with God, uh, and they don't know what real relationship is. Uh, and when they don't know what real relationship is with God, uh, they're in some form of promiscuous relationship. Uh, and the back seat of a car huh? and then you're taking them to pastor go and fix my children huh? and he's got to look at you and say huh? if you would have just prayed when they were babies huh? we probably wouldn't be in this mess right now huh? I'm trying to prevent some tomorrows huh? and some future issues huh? if you as men huh, would start praying we want to be the protector of our homes don't we men? This may be worse than I thought. We want to be protectors of our home. Don't we men? You better want to protect what God's given you. We want to be the provider of our home. We want to be the guard of our home. And we have no problem doing it physically. 
We'll work overtime. We'll buy a gun safe. We'll put alarm system on all the doors and the windows. But we leave the spiritual realm of our homes completely vulnerable to hell when we as men and husband and fathers do not create a culture of prayer in our families. I came to preach to the hearts and the minds of good, faithful, apostolic men tonight and remind you who God called you to be. He called you to be a fighter. So start fighting. Start fighting. If you quit fighting, get back to fighting. Start standing up. Grow some backbone and pray like you know how to pray. I know it's not a popular message. I'm tired of being seated. I'm tired of watching men in all these churches God's blessing me to preach in. It's not just here. It's in all the churches. I'm tired of watching men want to show how tough they are to their pastor. I don't have to line up with that. I'm a man. I'm tough. Do what I want to do. Showing them how tough you are. Not lining up with the word of God. You ain't showing me how tough you are. You show me how weak you are. You want to show me how tough you are? You want to show how God, how, how tough you are? Start lining up with the book. Start getting in line with your pastor. More importantly, start praying. Because if you'll start praying, you'll have no problem getting in line with the book. And you'll have no problem getting in line with the pastor. I'm going to tell you something. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Uh, The Bible said where there's no vision, the people perish. But I'm going to tell you something else. Where there's vision and people don't get a hold of it, they're still a perishing. And he's got vision. He's got God-ordained vision to take this church uh, and lead them into the next dimension, in the next realm. Uh, But he cannot do it by himself. Uh, It's going to require men uh, that take a stand. Uh, Revival starts in your home. Start taking a stand against the filth and the junk of this world and do it because you're a fighter. You got something worth fighting for. I got just a little bit longer and then I, I, I'm going to close. We're not having music tonight, so just bear with me. God's given me a direction for the ending of this service. Nehemiah tells of his, of his endeavor to rebuild the wall. And as always, when something right is being done, opposition shows up. You know the story, hammers and swords, the hands of his people. But I want you to listen to this. Nehemiah gives them a reason to fight. Nehemiah chapter 4. Therefore, said I, in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families. So what Nehemiah said, we, we got something to do. We got a job to do. We got to rebuild this thing. This thing's too valuable to leave in ruins. That's what Nehemiah's saying. And so under the unction of God, Nehemiah says, I, I've set them in the lower places. The places where you brace yourself up against the wall. And I've set people there after their families with swords and spears and bows. He equipped them. He placed them in a strategic position to make sure the wall gets rebuilt the way it needs to get rebuilt, the lower places. And then he equips them over their families. Next verse. Nehemiah said, I looked up and rose up and said to the nobles, to the rulers, to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of those that are coming against us. Be not afraid of the opposition that we're facing. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And then he equips them with their sword, their spear, their bow. He physically equips them. Then he mentally equips them. He says, men, you're a fighter. I want you to fight It's in your Bible. Nehemiah 4 and 14. I want you to fight for your brethren and for your sons and for your daughters 
and for your wives and for your houses. He put something in their hand and he put something in their heart. This is what you do and this is why you do it. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sisters. Fight for your children and your wife. Fight for your house. You want to know what God sent me to tell this church in the Holy Ghost? God said, I'm trying to build and rebuild some things at the Jesus Church. And if it's ever going to be built, I need men that are willing to fight. There's not going to be anything desired by God that's going to take place here in the building process that's going to come without a fight. So you better buckle up baby uh, and get ready to fight uh, like you never fought before You're going to have to fight in pre-service prayer. You're going to have to fight for every worship service. You're going to have to fight for every message preached. You're going to have to fight for every altar call. You're going to have to fight for every Bible study. You're going to have to fight for every soul one. But fight on. Fight on. And don't stop fighting. I don't care how tired you feel. I know it's not easy. I'm I'm not taking that away. I know it's not easy being a man uh, in today's world. Uh, The pressures of society and the pressures of everything we as men deal with, it's wearing us out. Uh, I'm not taking that away from anything. I know the load is heavy, uh, but you're a fighter. uh, And somewhere, somehow, some way, you got to start acting uh, like a fighter. Uh, I want you to be seated for a second. If you're married today, I want you to stand. If you're married, if you have a wife, I want you to stand. If you're a man and you have a wife, I want you to stand. If you're able-bodied, Bishop, you can be seated. I know, I know. Elders, you can be seated. Elder, you can be seated, my friend. Able-bodied men only. I know these elders mean well. We don't have to use them for this example, okay? But they're here with us. If you are, maybe you're not married, maybe you're a a father though. Is there any fathers in the building that's not standing yet? I want to make sure I include everybody. Okay. Men, I want you to step out. And I want you to form a circle around these two sections. Let's do that right now. Pastor, you can stay with me if you want to. It's up to you. You do what you feel, my friend. Do what you feel. I want you all to make, you don't have to hold hands. We don't have enough for that. But I want there to be some in the back and some in the front and some on each side. Spread out, brethren. Spread out. We have to cover everything here. I want you to see this. God sent me to remind you men of the reason you have to be a fighter. I want you to look within the circle. Look at your children. Look at your wives. Look at the church God's plan. Men, are you listening to me? Men, are you, are, you, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Don't let none distract you. I, I, I want to know today. I want you to look at the church that God's placed you in. I want you to look at your pastor and your pastor's wife and his children. I want you to look at Bishop and Sister Kite. If for no other reason, this is why you have to fight. Because of every individual sitting down right now, this is why you have to fight. Every one of them sitting down. They need you men. Are they incapable of fighting? Absolutely not. Mama can fight just as much as daddy. She's got to as a matter of fact. But I'm going to tell you where it starts. It starts with daddy. It starts with the husband. It starts with the men of the home. Because when God created man... He bred it into your DNA to be a fighter. Adam, dress the garden. Tend the garden. That means protect it. Keep all the stuff that don't need to be in there out of there. You're a fighter. Here's how I want to close today. I'm done preaching. If this is your husband, if this is your father, I want you to go to him right now. If you're able... Those of you that are unable, I completely understand. This is not about 
exposing anybody. There are some of you who have physical limitations. I'm not talking about you. If you have a father or a husband against this wall and you're here, I want you to go to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for letting me obey the Holy Ghost today. God is getting ready to do something at this church. Felt very strongly impressed that God is going to give us harvest here. God's going to do miracles here. I mean that, believe that with all of my heart. But if the structure that's standing against the walls and up the front and the back falls apart, none of it happens. If you don't fight together as a family unit for what you have right now, God will never add to this family. And so, brethren, I'm asking you to look. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sisters. Fight for your sons, your daughters, your children, your wives. Fight for your houses. We're going to make some fresh commitments to God. And we're going to start fighting like we know how. We're going to fight for our families, our marriages, our children, this church, revival in this city. How are we going to fight, preacher? We're going to pray. Now we can do this one of two ways, folks. We can take the next 30 seconds and pray some little shallow prayer. Give a little soft utterance of some kind or another. Go through the ritual and the motion and the routine of just saying a little something or another. Cotton candy prayer. Or we can take what God's saying to this church to heart tonight. And we can lift our voices. And we can pray that God strengthen us. I've already preached about families, but God did this to me yet again. He's serious about what I'm preaching. I'm curious today, is anybody ready to fight in the Holy Ghost? I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Those of you in the middle, I think you ought to stand to your feet if you're able. And I think you ought to lift your hands. You ought to link up one with the other. If you don't have a family member, find somebody and pray. You have brothers and sisters in the Lord that's here. Come on. This is all up to you. This is your choice. You can pray. Or you can get some backbone in the next few moments. Come on, you can't do this in a one punch knockout. You're going to have to go a few rounds. This is going to take just a moment. It's not just going to happen. You're going to have to tarry until. Come on, men. Fight for your wife. Fight for your children. Fight for your brother. Fight for your house. Oh, that men ought always to pray. Come on, mama. Let them hear your voice. Come on, grandma. Let those grandbabies hear your voice. I'm a fighter. I got to pray. I got to pray. This is spiritual warfare. Hell's after my marriage. Hell's after my babies. Hell's after my church family. Hell's after this city. Somebody fight in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, somebody enter into a place of travail. Somebody start interceding in the Holy Ghost. Come on, men. Come on, men. Is that all you got? Come on, men. Can you fight tonight? Woo! Come on, wife, pray for your husband right now. Pray for God's strength and wisdom and direction. He's trying to lead you and your babies to heaven.
Come on, somebody fight right now. We're going to have to push for just a moment. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, hell is fighting against this service right now. Hell is going to come after your family this week. Uh, you're going to want to come to the church and pray. Uh, and your job's going to try to wear you out. Uh, but if you'll do some fighting right now, you'll push through this week. Uh, and we'll see God do something greater. Come on, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. This is my marriage. These are my children. This is my home. This is my church. Come on, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood right now. We're wrestling against spiritual principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world. We're fighting against hell and demons and demonic forces that ought to stir something inside of every man and every woman. I don't want hell to take my babies. I don't want hell to ruin my marriage. I don't want hell to take a revival away from my church. I don't want this city to be lost. Come on, hell's been fighting against some of your families this week. You can win it right now if you'll get into a place of prayer. Hell's been coming against some of your minds this week. Uh, God's trying to get you to that place where you can overcome it. Uh, somebody fight right now. I'm pleading with you. The Holy Ghost is pleading with you. Get to that place in prayer. Forget about what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is saying. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Uh, come on, pray. Fight, fight on, fight, fight in this house right now. Come on, God wants to use some of you to open some doors in this city. 
God wants to use some of you as spiritual prayer warriors and intercessors. Uh, it starts with how you fight tonight. Uh, it starts with what you're going to do it tonight. Uh, Come on, don't stop. This is where we typically stop. Somebody go past the minimum right now. Somebody press through in the Holy Ghost just a little further. Come on, this is why we're fighting. Come on, this is what we're doing it for. Come on, men, after a message like this, surely you're not sitting there looking around and talking right now. Come on, men, after a message like this, surely you can push through a little bit more. How much does your family mean to you? How much does your marriage mean to you? Is just a little five-minute prayer meeting after tonight okay? Or can you find yourself getting further in God, uh, reaching for more of God? Uh, surely your babies mean more than a five-minute prayer meeting tonight. Uh, surely your marriage means more to you uh, than just a few shallow moments after a message. Uh, surely somebody can raise up and start fighting. Come on, hell wants us to stop right now. There's a spirit of intimidation that said this is good enough. This is far enough. But I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, if you'll fight through it, if you'll push through it, if you'll press past it right now, God will break it in this house.
Come on, I want us to be reverent to the Spirit of God that's happening right now. Close, I want everybody to close their eyes and just pray for a moment. I'm asking you to be reverent to the house of God, the Spirit of God that's moving in this house right now. Everybody needs to be closing their eyes, praying. We don't need to be looking around right now. Come on. Come on, church family. Help me pray for just a moment.
want to say thank you to Brother Wainwright and his family. He doesn't ask for this, but I'm telling you, it's noticeable. He's hours up here during the week, hours and hours in prayer and study to find the heartbeat of God. And revival's not over, but just in the two months that he's been here, the whole dynamic of this church has changed. It's not the same church. It feels like a different church to me. I talked to him about it this evening. Not that it was a bad church before because we know it wasn't, but I'm telling you that com- there's something that has changed. It's another work, another dimension. I'm seeing people come to the church and pray that I ain't seen in three years. I haven't s- I'm seeing things start to happen that I haven't seen happen in years. And that's a sign that we're entering into revival. And I appreciate you being fighters. This is a fighting church. We've all been knocked down more than once. And I can raise my hand to that. (laughs) Lord knows I don't like getting knocked down. But you know what? We're going to get back up. Life comes. You try your best. You don't feel like you got an A+. That next morning, you got fresh mercy to try to get it right again. And, and I want to tell you sincerely, men, I need your help. I don't need your help in any other area. And I need your help in more than one area. But the most important area that I need your help is in prayer. That's it. Pastor, I'm right here with you praying. I'm right here with you. And I'm telling you, together, I believe that God is going to build something off of our men. That's the vision that I have for this church. And I know that Brother Wainwright is right in the Holy Ghost. We're not beating anybody up. But it's an encouragement. It's a call that says, hey, there's so much more available. And I want that more. I want to live in the overflow. Amen. I said I wasn't going to talk today, but I changed my mind. I'm sorry. I want to say that I love this church, and I'm appreciative of everything that you do, the support of the ministry, worship and praying. And um, I'm just incredibly grateful tonight. I would like to remind you this coming week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's not an official, so I'm not going to have everybody come. But men, this is for you, men. And if you're a lady and you don't have a husband or you don't have a leader of the home, that's, that's perfectly fine. You're no less important. In fact, you may have more peace. I'm just picking. I said I wasn't going to joke. That was a joke, but they might. <laughs> I'm just fake it. But, but this week, come up here with your family. If his door's locked, use your church to come in. I'll have the air on this week from 7 to 8. I can't cool it to 66 every night, but I'll have it bearable. I'll have it around 70 to 72. You will not sweat to death unless you start shouting in here. Then you might start sweating. But this coming week, let's get our families and let's just frequent the house of the Lord. And let's just see what God does. Can we do that together? Amen. Can we commit to that? It's not an official thing. We're not meeting up here every night at 7. Between 7 and 8, you can come and pray. It's not an official hour. You can pray for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You may just come one night. Some, Some families may come two nights. It doesn't matter. Just there's a frequent team of people coming to pray. And I know that we started this thing off with seven days of of prayer, and I appreciate that. But how many can testify? Sometimes it's hard getting your flesh to want to pray. It is very hard. Can Can I just be real with you tonight, church, as the pastor? 
after the first hour, you're just getting started. If you will learn to harness your flesh, after 30 or 45 minutes, man, you start feeling true liberty. And you can get really in that vein. And I'm not putting a time limit on it. But I'm just saying, the longer sometimes you linger, the easier it gets. Don't limit God to a time clock when it comes to prayer. Don't limit Him. He can take you further than you ever thought you could go. And He'll do things that you can never even imagine. That's the kind of God I serve. Amen. Can we stand right now all over the house? I think it's appropriate right now. Let's just give God a good hand clap of praise for what He has done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I'm thankful. Some of you have said, I'm a failure. No, you're a fighter. Brother Rankin, I've messed up. I'm the one with the problem. No, you're the one that's got knocked down. But guess what? Get back up. Go to your prayer closet. Joy comes in the morning. Victory is eventually going to come. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Any other announcements to be made? Coast is clear. Amen. You still want to... I'll talk to you about that. We can have Wednesday to talk about it. Amen. I love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming. We'll see you back Wednesday night. Prayer at 7, church at 7.30. Ladies Bible study Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Amen. This week, I hope to see a lot of great people up here praying. God bless you in Jesus' name.